I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everyone, this is Jeremy Croft with the Joe Blow Movie Network here to bring you a delicious new tribute video. Today, we're taking a look back at a true horror classic, a dark and thrilling tale of murder and suspense. It's one of the most highly regarded and influential films of the 90s, and one of my all-time favorites, Silence of the Lambs, which celebrates its 25th anniversary this month. Welcome to the Silence of the Lambs tribute video. Silence of the Lambs tells the story of young FBI trainee Clary Starling, who works with the imprisoned serial killer Hannibal Lecter to hunt down another killer, known as Buffalo Bill. The film is based on author Thomas Harris's hit novel of the same name. While Hollywood had already made a film featuring Hannibal, Michael Mann's Manhunter, in 1986, the film failed to gain any traction with audiences, and, given the success of Harris's follow-up novel, the question on everyone's mind who would be the next to try their hand at bringing the infamous cannibal to the screen? The answer, at least originally, was Gene Hackman, who immediately snapped up the film rights to the novel. The initial plan was for Hackman to direct, produce, and star in the film as Clarice's mentor Jack Crawford, Michelle Pfeiffer was set to play Starling, and John Hurt would play Hannibal Lecter. Alas, this version never came to be, with Hackman relinquishing the rights following the release and success of Mississippi Burning, another dark and violent film that won Hackman accolades and seemed too thematically similar to Silence of the Lambs. The rights were promptly bought by Orion Pictures, who hired Jonathan Demme to direct the film. Demme was an unconventional choice, having previously directed films like Married to the Mob and the Talking Heads concert film Stop Making Sense. In casting the film, Demme looked at some of the best and brightest stars in the industry. Jodie Foster lobbied hard for the role, but was considered to be the wrong fit, Michelle Pfeiffer was once again offered the role of Clarice, but turned it down due to the sheer darkness of the piece. After Pfeiffer turned him down, Demi agreed to meet with Foster, and was won over by the actress almost immediately. For the role of the psychopathic Dr. Lecter, actors Christopher Lloyd, Jeremy Irons, Jack Nicholson, and Sean Connery were all considered for the part. Demi finally selected the British actor Anthony Hopkins, citing Hopkins' role in The Elephant Man as the deciding factor. Ted Levine and Scott Glenn rounded out the cast as serial killer Buffalo Bill and FBI agent Jack Crawford. The character of Buffalo Bill was actually a composite of three real-life serial killers. Ted Bundy, who lured women into his van with a cast on his hand. Ed Gein, who skinned his victims alive. And Gary Heidnick, who kept his victims in a pit in his basement. You grilled me pretty hard, as I recall, on the Bureau's civil rights record in the Hoover years. I gave you an A. A minus, sir. Jack Crawford was based on real-life FBI agent John Douglas, who acted as a consultant on the film. Production of the film started in the fall of 1989, with a majority of the film shot on location in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Key members of the cast and crew worked closely with the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit, studying criminal profiling, as well as weapons training and firearm training. The FBI was interested in recruiting more women into the Bureau and allowed Jodie Foster to train with seasoned female agents to ensure authenticity. While filming his scenes, Hopkins went full-on method, going so far as to be bolted behind solid glass each and every day. He and Jodie Foster had very little interaction with each other outside of their scenes, which was exactly the way he wanted it. Oh, Clarice, your problem is you need to get more fun out of life. It was also his idea to dress Lecter in clinical white, his reason being that people already feared dentists and doctors who dressed all in white. The census taker wants Many of the great character moments that occurred between Hopkins and Foster were improvised on set, including this crazy slurping sound. During the course of filming, key changes were made from the script. For instance, in this iconic and horrifying scene, the script originally called for the ruse to be revealed inside the elevator. It was only later that Demi decided to reveal Hannibal's escape from inside the ambulance. By delaying the reveal a few seconds, the impact is that much more terrifying and powerful. It's my humble opinion that Silence of the Lambs features career best performances from pretty much everyone in the cast. This was particularly notable for Hopkins, as he's only on screen for like 16 minutes. The film was originally scheduled for release in December 1990, 
was pushed back two months due to the award success of another Orion-produced film. The release change turned out to be a brilliant move. When Silence of the Lambs was released in theaters on Valentine's Day weekend in 1991, it was a huge financial and critical success, grossing over $270 million on a budget of just $19 million. Despite the film being released a full year before the Academy Awards were announced, the film went on to sweep the Oscars entirely, winning for almost all of the key creative talent, including Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Screenplay, and of course, Best Picture. The Silence of the Lambs. Anthony Hopkins would return to the role of Hannibal two more times in the sequel, Hannibal, by Ridley Scott, and the prequel, Red Dragon, directed by Brett Ratner. While both films are better than they should be, neither approaches the level of artistry that was achieved in Silence of the Lambs. And the less said about the origin film, Hannibal Rising, the better. Most recently, everyone's favorite people eater was seen in Brian Fuller's recently canceled NBC series, Hannibal. So what is it about Silence of the Lambs that makes the film so damn great? Well, it's pretty much everything. From the atmospheric cinematography by Tak Fujimoto, to the tightly paced editing and haunting score by Howard Shore, all the way through to the flawless performances and perfectly modulated direction, the film is a masterpiece of the genre. While it's unknown whether or not Hannibal Lecter will return to screens anytime soon, there's no denying the lasting impact of his most famous and successful outing. Silence of the Lambs is a film for the ages, one that is still appreciated and analyzed 25 years after its initial release. So, a toast to you, Hannibal. Enjoy your success with some fava beans and a nice Chiani. From the Joe Blow Movie Network, I'm Jeremy Groff. Ready when you are, Sergeant Pembry.